There has been a growing concern surrounding the numbers of my eBay business. Now, I've known about this for quite some time, but I've chosen to not do anything about it until now. Today's the day, enough is enough. And what I want to do in this video is I want to take you through my eBay store health check that I've kind of monitored over the last few months, but like I said, I just haven't gone into the principles of what you need to do to fix it. Uh, I'm gonna show you what that health check looks like in this video. It's gonna be something that will really help your own eBay store as well. You can have a look at these numbers on your own store, reflect on it, and see whether or not you should be making the same changes that I'm going to make. Um, so let's get into it. The first thing I wanna have a look at, first of all, the numbers that I'm looking at here are my active listings and my sold listings. Now. At, the, at, the, at this very moment, I've got 2,570 items active in my store. I have sold in the last 90 days 1,190. What that gives us is a sell-through rate of 46%. So it, it's not a true sell-through rate, but it is over the last 90 days. It's just a, a number that you always want to have around 50%. So you know, if we had 2,500 items, you'd want to have about 1,250 as a minimum. Obviously, anything more than 1,250 past 50% worth of the sell-through rate, even better. There are stores that are in the hundreds of percent, 125, 150% sell-through rate, and those stores are doing incredibly well. They usually have a few less items in store. But me, 2,500, I should be at around 1,250, and I'm kind of just under that at 1,190. So my goal is to actually get my sell-through rate up to 60%. That's the number that I want to achieve throughout 2024, if we can get there any anytime sooner over the next month for the final month of the year in 2023, that would be great also. Um, the other one as well is the average sale price of the store is $28.79. The way you can work that out is have a look at what your store value is. For, for me, it's $74,000. Uh, and you can divide that by those number of active listings. So 2,570 divided by 74,000 gives us an average store value per item in our store of 2870 nine. Um, the average sale price though over the last, well, 12 months, 2023 on eBay is $33.29. So even though we've got an average uh, value of $28, we're getting a $33 average that actually, actually goes on to sell. So what that tells me is there's a lot of dead, dud, old stock that isn't being found. It's cheap. Nobody wants it. And it's sitting in our store. It's taking up inventory uh, space here in the garage and up in the third bedroom. So I've looked at these numbers and I've thought, how do we how do we go about fixing these numbers? Because my goal is to try and get $35 worth of an average store uh, value. So $28.79, I want to grow that to $35. And my goal throughout 2024 next year is to try and get an average sale price of $40. So I want to grow it from $33 to $40. So that, that are sort of the numbers that we're looking at. 60% sell, uh, sell through rate and a $40 average sale price. That would be ideal. So how are we gonna do that? First of all, we're gonna put a bit of a freeze on sourcing new stock. I'm not gonna go out thrifting. I think the biggest thing you can do is to just sit back, reflect on what you've got and try and tweak what you've got, uh, clean out some stuff as well that isn't gonna be going on to sell for very much money. Um, so there will still be some listings throughout December, but it's albeit gonna be pretty sporadic. I'm not going to place too much of a focus. I'm not going to self, set myself a number uh, of active listings or anything like that. I'm just simply going to focus on the 2,570 items that we've got in store. Um, like I touched on, we're going to be deleting the crap. We're going to be going through the number one category that we've got in this uh, eBay business, which is DVDs. And we're going to be looking for items that are $10 or less. And we're going to be basically deleting them. Anything that's priced $15 or more in the DVD category, we're going to keep it in store, but we're going to reduce the price to hopefully get somebody out there interested in the new price that we've got for it, and hopefully they can buy it, which will improve sell-through rate. Um, so we are going to be doing that in that number one category of DVDs, but we're going to apply those principles to all of the other categories as well. We're going to do the same for video games and then shoes. We're going to set ourselves a minimum purchase price and anything below that or anything that just isn't great quality, uh, we're going to delete out of our store as well. I'm going to be going to the flea market to try and clean some of these items out uh, as well. So it's not going to be a true donation, a, few, a, a true cut loss. Uh, it's going to be to try and recoup some money for it, albeit it probably won't be a lot of money. Um, but what that's going to do is it's going to increase the store value and it's also going to increase the sell-through rate of the store as well. Now, I have a third bedroom. 
which is full of stock. It's majority of it is DVDs. And what my goal is, is to try and bring all of it down into the garage here. I wanna get all of the stuff up there down here and create a study that I can just edit these YouTube videos out of. I used to edit up there, but it was really just claustrophobic and quite crowded with all of the inventory around me. Um, so I figured if I could just cut it all out, bring it all down here, have a really good efficient store, turning over great items, I don't need too much more space than this garage. So the goal is to try and reduce the two and a half thousand items down to 2,000 items. I wanna basically clean out 570 items from our store, and I think that will improve the sell-through rate and the average sale price, like I was mentioning. Um, so that's gonna be the game plan. It's not the be all and end all, but it is just an awareness that you do have a lot of clutter in here and you do need to do something about it. And the chances are your store has probably got similar metrics to mine where you've been sourcing over the years, you've just slowly built up more and more inventory and you realize that what you were doing you know, six to 12 months ago isn't as good of a quality of stock as what you're now buying. And it all comes through experience. So I would definitely have a look at those numbers, have a look at the store health check that I've just gone through with you there, see what your numbers look like and see if you can improve those numbers ever so slightly with some new goals for 2024. Um, it isn't all doom and gloom though. I'm gonna take you through some numbers now for the end of November. Uh, we had a pretty good end to the month and I wanna take you through those now. And then we're gonna jump into the what's sold and I'm gonna show you 10 really great sales that have come through for what was a pretty monster weekend on eBay. Last time we spoke, we were finishing up Black Friday. There were three other days left in the month and I wanted to update you on those numbers. 450 came in, then 146, and then $471. That 471, we were doing a bit of a countdown, weren't we, Courtney? <laughs> yes. We were trying to hit $14,000 in revenue because we'd never hit 14 in revenue and we got $14,013. So. I was pretty excited when I saw that one tick over. I think it was like 10 o'clock at night Yeah. on the last day of the month and we needed a sale to come in and then it just tipped us over the edge to 14000 So good. Yeah, so look, we finished on a $465 average over the course of the entire month. And yes, there were four days in there where it was you know $4,500 in sales that wasn't netting us a massive amount of profit. I think we got about $1,000 worth of profit documented in that previous video. But um, to hit just $14,000 is just super exciting because in three and a half years, we've never been able to surpass $13,200. Um, so we're able to do an extra $800. All right, now we're gonna kick off the top 10 sales of the weekend. I do need to say, first of all, that we had 40 sales come through and we average about 30. So this was a significant increase and I think it's obviously just a continuation at this time of year. We've got so many people buying for the Christmas holidays. Um, buying for friends and family. This is one very cool Christmas present, I think, for somebody out there. I found this. Were you with me, Courtney? Uh, we were in Tweed, or I was in Tweed Heads. Yeah. Um, this was about six months ago. I sat in our store for a little while now. Um, I listed this up. First of all, I saw this. So it's a, it's a vintage um, tennis I want, I can uh, sweater. It's Adidas. I would say 1980s, maybe mm. 1990s. Mm. Um, had a look on some websites um, of people trying to sell them on like Depop and places like that. And they were going for like five, $600, this exact jumper. Um, so I tried to price it up onto eBay around that mark. I think I went about $400. And then over the six months, it just sat around forever. So I've been continually looking at it with about 20 or so watches on it and yet no one's striking. So I've just continually dropped it, dropped it, dropped it. And I was ended up, I got $140 worth of a sale price for this one, which I'm still really happy about because we paid $25 in the op shop. So 25 and 140, you're gonna take that every single day. But it was just one of those ones where you've got to wait for the right buyer, kind of a unique item, um, but we're still very happy to see the 140 come through. So that's a very big one to kick off this top 10 what's sold. Um, we've got another good one coming up next. The reason why I'm sweating my face off is because we were in a running event yesterday and I just, you got roasted at the beach. Mm, yeah. But I got roasted in the sun in this, in this race and my forehead. My it, back is so bad. It was like 33 degrees, which I don't know what Celsius is, but hot. Yeah, I don't know what Fahrenheit is. Um, but Jesus, my face. So I apologize if I'm, um, if I'm looking like a red beetroot. Um, this was a good sale. We got Mario Kart on the Nintendo Wii. Um, that one sold with a couple of these uh, steering wheels, which I always like to try and sell if I can get my hands on them. $65 we got for that little combination. Now that will just go with a bit of bubble wrap. Should hopefully fit into a small satchel. If not, we'll get it into a box and it should go for a small satchel rate. 
Um, I'm not really too concerned about these things getting damaged. I think if we put enough bubble wrap around it, uh, a satchel should be fine. Uh, it doesn't have this one here, a manual, which I thought was an interesting note. We've still got $65 and it didn't have the manual. Um, so that was a great sale. Um, I've got a few other video games here that have gone on to sell as well uh, for this little part of the what sold because we've had some really, really good numbers before I tip them all over and break them. Um, okay, so I'll save that one. That one was a really good one. This one here was great. Uh, you would have seen this in a recent video when I picked this one up in a bulk buy. It was a big Wii bundle that I was able to grab. I did some comp scanning. I didn't realize this was worth exactly what it was. Um, Wii Party went for $55. I think it was 65 I think it was oh, on a best offer. Oh. I think it was listed for 65 and there are comps on eBay for 65 mm. but I think we accepted a $55. Yeah. But that's that's unbelievable because you see these sorts of games on Wii's all the time. We've probably got them on our on our video game shelf, but they only go for about 10 bucks. and I thought this was going to be one of them, but this is an outlier. If you find Wii Party, you're going to get yourself over $50 like we have just there. Speaking of over $50, Courtney, We've got Call of Duty Black Ops, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Now, for any regular viewers out there, you might have remembered I picked these up about two weeks ago in a flea market. And if, Courtney, I don't know if you can see that there, but I paid $2 a piece at the flea mm. for these games. So I'm $4 in. I chose, because it was the same console and it was the same game series, where my love affair with doing bulk deals of video games continues. I just thought I'd just double that up and we'll put that into a large satchel, uh, sorry, a large uh, tracked envelope. Um, we got $50 for those two right there as well. Mm. So, you know, that's that's $105 in video games that we've paid no more than $6 for. So it's a bit like the DVDs. There's, there's some really good profit margins when you're playing the video games and the DVDs. I think we're just more becoming a media house than anything else. Yeah. We are slowly transitioning into just sourcing only video games and DVDs because it makes up 50% of what we do. But we've just looked at the numbers when you break it all down to its true profit and the, the margins are just their best in those two categories. Shoes, not so much because you've got to pay more. Um, you know, all these other collectibles, they're great, but we just don't get our hands on them regularly. Um, so for that reason, I think we should just play with what we're able to source regularly, which is video games and DVDs, and they sell. Mm. It's just my thoughts recently, anyway. Um, this one was a brilliant one that came in this morning. We've got the PS Vita. I remember, did you, did you ever play the Vita? No. Never? I did for a period there when I was a whole lot younger. <laughs> Um, tested, working, amazing condition, like new. Uh, we had a game that I actually originally bundled with this console um, and it's, it was Resistance something or other and it, it sold for $35 in the Black Friday sale. So I had to jump into the listing and go, oh shit, you know, the PS Vita had that game in there. Deleted that game, just um, the, the listing I should say, and we just had these two left over, which was Raymond Origins and the PS Vita console. Uh, it also has its charger as well. So one game, a charger, the console, Three hundred dollars, Courtney. No, crazy. Unbelievable. That's the top, then. Hey, that's, that's the best the one. That's the best one of the weekend. Yeah. So three hundred bucks for a PS Vita console. I picked one this uh, this up in a private pick, uh, and uh, yeah, I, we've already got our money back on that private pick. So this is all profit, uh, which is brilliant. Um, so I thought I'd just group all of them together, guys, because like I said, Courtney, if you want to just scan across here, this is our video game shelf, guys. So. All of these, we've got Xbox, we've got PlayStation 4, Nintendo DS, Xbox One, PS3, PS2. Uh, we've got some PS1s down there. We've got some Wii down there. So we've got pretty much every single console set of game. Um, but, but we've only got, in our whole inventory, just basically this bookshelf. And obviously a little, you know, a few bits and pieces up here in video games. But if you were to have a good look around our inventory, like our DVDs are coming out of our ears. We've got so much volume. Yep, this is our best, our second best selling category. We get 15% of our sales this year have come in this category, yet we've never expanded past this amount of inventory in the garage. So what that tells me is that we're getting a really good sell-through rate in this category and we're getting a really significant profit as well. So just something to pay attention to, guys. If you're thinking about what you might want to start selling on eBay, if you're new to it, um, I definitely think the video games is certainly a category to be focusing on. All right, now this one I can't really show you, but I can promise you um, that there is a Robert, what was the name, Muchamore? Yeah, Book Bundle. That was a horrible pronunciation, and I know that a lot of viewers out there, when I showed the initial find uh, of this, they all said that this was a really good author. So what I'll do is I'll put the comps oh, up yeah. on screen, and the comps will give you the breakdown of how to pronounce that name. Um, a whole lot better than me anyway. I've already gone ahead and put it into its box, and as you can see, there's no, you can't even hear it, can you? There's no movement in there, is there? You know what that tells me? 
It was packaged well. Hey? Yep, that really was. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do it though, I did it. No, I didn't. Didn't I? No. Um, yes, so you want to make sure that you're packaging it up really, really well, as we've done there with that one there. But that one went for $120, hence the reason why I wanted to package it well. Not, I mean, I shouldn't say that because you should package everything well that you sell. But you want to give extra care. It's really proud, aren't you? I was very, I won't do it again. You heard it. Oh, you didn't hear it. Because um, that's how good it was. Jesus. Um, do you remember what we got for this? 70? Oh, I don't think it was 70. 50? I think it was like 40. Nah. I truly can't remember. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Any, anyway, it sold for that much that's on screen. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, 48. 48, yeah, yeah. I, thought it was, I thought it was slightly less than 50. Um, now, a lot of you guys are saying, yeah, but I reckon they're probably scratched. Well, <laughs> random disc. Random disc check. Look at that. Oh, I can see me. <laughs> yeah, that looks so good. Nah, they're fine. They're fine. And it's not like we're just looking at them. That's the other thing they're going to say. Yeah, well, you should have looked at that before you listed up your DVDs, Matt. You shouldn't have to be checking them now. Yeah. Well. We're not. We check say, them. We check them always before we buy, especially those ones. Kids DVDs, you need to make sure that you're checking for scratches. Before you buy it. Because most, like 90% are not. 90% are scratched. Yeah. We got very lucky with this Wheels Bundle. Um, can't remember where we got our hands on it. Might have been a private buy where they did the work for us. Um, and we just knew that they were scratch free. Mm. Um, you know, you can get slight surface scratches and that's not going to be a massive problem. I think a lot of people get scared about DVDs and they're like, oh, you know, there's a mark or two on it. Maybe I shouldn't buy it. You can buy it. Um, you can even say in the listing in the description that there's light surface scratches and you're going to get away with it. Um, not even get away with it. You're just going to be fine. Um, you're allowed to have them with a couple of surface scratches as long as they play back because you're selling pre-owned DVDs. Um, so yeah, that sold for a pretty good price as well for $48. Mm. Let's talk about these. So we've got some Columbia women's hiking boots there, sold for 50 bucks, and then these sold for 70. Mm. We've got some New Balance, uh, which is a fantastic brand. Um, some New Balance shoes. These are the 580s. Suede, is that? Yeah, kind of a, yeah. It's a bit of suede material to them. The soles are in great condition. The size, that they're a 10 or an 11. A 10. Yep, size 10, so a really good size, always helps the sell-through rate. Uh, New Balance 580, great condition, $70. Shoes have actually done pretty well this weekend, which has been great. We've had some hats go on to sell. Um, this one was at a flea market for $2, I think it was about two weeks ago. Uh, the Chats, I just thought it was a cool hat. The band's really cool too, if anyone is into their music. The Chats, a very good band. Uh, Corduroy is the reason why I went ahead and picked this one up. We've got a good turnaround. Uh, I think it was about a $25 sale price off a $2 purchase. And it was only a week or two ago in the fleece. So that was awesome. And then our, um, our big US hat buy that we made over from a guy in the US that got in touch with us. Uh, we paid about $4.60 per hat. And this one was a really good sale. I think we got $30 for this one. So the Looney Tunes embroidered, vintage Acme Kids, uh, 1992 Warner Brothers on the tag as well. So I thought that was really cute. I think it was your favorite hat, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Out of the purchase. It's cute. Um, that cockroach that was in here before, Courtney, is not going to fly at you. No, it's, I cannot. It's no huge longer, fear, huge. It's no longer here in the room. I can't. Um, the Chats, Looney Tunes, two really good hats. Um, sourced for a total of $6. Sold for about 50 or 60 bucks. I think that's pretty cool. And these are the remaining 30 items uh, that make up the total of 40 sales that Courtney's going to be putting into the mailbag today. So as you can see, a really good even coverage across every single one of the categories that we like to sell. Obviously, the DVDs continually being the number one category. We've got some really good box sets. This one here, I need to make a special mention on this one. This is Utopia. I was out uh, last week in a thrift store and I found it for $2. Came home, the sell-through rate was so much so that we were able to sell it in 48 hours for $35, which was one of the higher-end comps for this uh, for this movie or uh, TV series. Um, plus, the buyer paid $30 worth of international postage. Um, so, it's off to the UK. We got uh, a $65 uh, revenue price on that one there, which I thought was pretty cool. But uh, there's, there's Dukes of Hazard. True Detective, Inspector Montalbo, or whatever his name is, The Mayans. I've sold about 10 copies of that from the Big W store buyout. Uh, we've got WrestleMania 21 Goes Hollywood, uh, Mythbusters, Malcolm in the Middle, The Simpsons, The Dudesons, Pokemon. Guys, these are all TV shows and TV series that you're going to want to be finding because these are a perfect example of the continuation of TV show sales that we always get. Um, Indiana Jones, I've sold that. I'm sure you guys out there have sold this one as well. This one's a very common item that you find, but it does go on to sell. 
Uh, and then this one, Danielle Steel, uh, we got a $40 sale price just because it is a nice big box set. Um, so the Danielle Steel collection there, that'll go into a box. It shouldn't cost too much to ship off. So there you go. The DVDs are doing really well. Uh, another hat out of that buyout that we got from the US. Um, this beanie went for about $19.95. So it did go cheap. I reckon we could have got about $25 or $30 for that. Uh, a couple of books that wouldn't have cost us a hell of a lot. This is a couple of Courtney's pickups, yeah, actually. Yeah, that was just from me. I didn't even buy it. Your book? Well, Kristen gave it to me, actually. Oh. And then, yeah, that was... And then meatballs. Like dollar book, I reckon. Yeah, so we got a good $20-odd dollars a piece for those. Yeah. Um, we're, selling some, uh, so we're selling some Transformers from that buyout in the thrift store a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Um, bought all of those Transformers. A lot of them were worth some significant money. These are some of the cheaper ones. Um, but we're still getting about $25 a piece for these, which is really cool. Um, we're going to have to do a bit of a sale on our on our wrestling figures that remain. We've got from our purchase that we made back in February. Uh, I think we've got about 100 wrestling figures, and we're down to about 20 or so. Um, these ones are always selling for about 20 bucks. So if you can find these wrestling figures, uh, you should do well on those. Uh, we've got four pairs of shoes selling. No surprises as to the brands. Uh, we've got Hoka selling. Uh, we've got a couple of Nike shoes there as well. Um, these Kygers, um, they're a good shoe actually. They sold for about 40 bucks. Uh, and then these ones here as well. I think they're the Sikonis, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sikoni. A um, couple of pairs of clothing items as well. We've got a Steelers t-shirt and then we've got a Santa Cruz singlet that was brand new with tags. And then a couple of cheap video games as well that didn't quite make the top 10. Um, so yeah, there you go. Courtney's got a lot of work to do this afternoon. 40 items in total. It's been a pretty good weekend. So what I'd like to do now is take you guys back to yesterday afternoon when Courtney and I made a bit of a start on the cull. We jumped up into the third bedroom, we had a look at some of the DVDs, and we started to pull out those, like we said in our game plan, of $10 or less and reducing those prices on anything that was $15 or more. So I'll give you a look at the update and uh, I'll swing it back to let you know how things finished up. All right, we've made a pretty decent start. As you can see, all of these DVDs here that Courtney's looking through, she's scanning them up to see if they're worth that $10 or less. And we've so far been able to pull out this pile here. That's dirt cheap. No one's looked at it. Single listings. Some of them are brand new, like that Blu-ray. I don't know. We're just going to delete it. There's 19 that we've been able to pull out so far. We've got so much more to sift through. I've got to go through this wall here as well. And then what's left on this wall are multiples. So it's they, they still might come out, but like we've got weeds as an example here. Actually, I should pull that out because that's a third and a fourth, but they're double ups. So when it's a set of two, it still could be worth $15. So like I said, it's just a rough draft at the moment. Um, so we've got one, two and half basically. And then we've got a couple of empty shelves here already based on the cull that's going on just here. So there's a whole lot more to do. We're going to tackle this wall as well. But I just want to give you guys a bit of an update. So far, it's very, very therapeutic to, to come across some of these DVDs that literally weren't even being looked at. And we're just going to go to the uh, we're going to go to the flea market on Sunday with it and try and sell them off for, you know, 50 cents each. All right, so here's a really good example of one that we're holding on to, but we're just manipulating the price on. This is the Andy Hardy Collection 3. We've got it priced up for $20. There's been eight views and one watcher, and we're gonna drop the price to $15, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it back. There we go, back on the shelf. Um, so we're doing that for most of these scans. If they're priced at $15 or less, we're just deleting it. Um, but if they're a good DVD in the price range that we want to be selling for, we're just going to try and drop the price to get the ultimate sale. So uh, there's been quite a few of those, but we're actually building up a bit of a pile here. We're up to about 60 now, 60 DVDs that we've stripped off um, that we're going to try and sell off at the flea. So within just a couple of hours yesterday, we've been able to do this. Our store is now sitting at 2,408 items. We've got 100, 1,186 sold items. So when you crunch those numbers, we're looking at a new sell-through rate within our store of 49%. By cleaning out 113 items from our store in just one afternoon, uh, we've been able to increase the sell-through rate of 3%, which I think is fantastic for what was just a couple of hours worth of work. So we're going to be putting a hell of a lot more time into this over the course of December. I think we can really significantly improve these metrics. Uh, I did put a sale recently on my shoes, so that has fluctuated the store ever so slightly because obviously the, uh, the average store value does drop when you're running the sale. So I'm not 100% sure on what the new average sale prices are, but I'll definitely reflect on those over the next few days once that sale on the shoes ends. 
Um, but this is a very, like I, like I mentioned in that little clip before, it's a very therapeutic exercise. The condense, the cull, just bringing it all together. Once we've done that, we're actually gonna make sure that every single item has a skew because that's our other negative uh, in our store. We don't have great skews um, across every single item. We, we know where things are, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer to find. Uh, I don't wanna have that into 2024. So once the cull's taken place, we've removed everything, the next step in the chain uh, is to actually go through and make sure everything's got a SKU number to improve that efficiency as well. So look, it is all good and fun to go out thrifting, no doubt about it. Um, it's my favorite part of doing this and I've probably enjoyed that part of it a little bit too much, so much so that I've neglected you know, the inner workings of the, the stuff you've already got. Um, so hopefully this could be a bit of a kick up the butt for you guys to do the same sort of a, a cleanse of your own store to keep things in order and to make sure things are super efficient. Um, having spoken briefly there about thrifting, I am going to leave you with a thrifting video, some fun stuff to go and watch. Oh, apologies that there wasn't any thrifting content in this video today, but that one right there was a huge day in the thrift not too long ago. So go and enjoy that. Appreciate you being here for this one. We'll see you soon.